Ah, son of a bitch. Man, that hurt. Ah. Yeah, that's going to leave a mark. The last thing I remember was the power going out and everything going blurry. How long was I? Oh, God. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Why am I all pixel? Wait. Where the hell am I? I just can't seem to grow up. I said I just can't seem to grow up. But you know what? What? I don't think I want all right, to. Follow me here. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh. everyone and welcome to Retro Fun Time. I guess I'm still your host Roberto Vegas and welcome to wherever the hell this is. <sighs> okay, so I figured out this much. I've been sucked into some video game world. I'm stuck here like Captain and I have no idea how to get home. On the plus side though, we still got a camera. Well, more like a camera guy. Hello. So we can still bring you the retro-inspired content, no matter where I end up. I did find something interesting, though. This bag here was just lying on the ground. I was just walking around, then suddenly... And when I looked, I tripped over the damn thing. I almost sprained my ankle, too. I haven't quite figured out what's inside the bag, but I did find, oddly enough, the video I recorded before all this went down, which leads us to what game we are covering today, Earthbound! The Mother series as a whole is one of my favorite RPG series, and Earthbound holds a special place in my heart. Released August of 1994 in Japan under the title Mother 2, Earthbound follows the story of Ness, a young boy who discovers he is the one to save the world against the evil Gygus. Joined by his cohorts Paula, Jeff, and Pooh, the four travel across a parody version of the world and stop at nothing to defeat the evil forces threatening to kill our world. Though it didn't seem to do that well here in the States, the game became a cult classic and still earns top dollar in online auctions. So why don't you guys check out the gameplay while I figure out how the heck to get out of here. Maybe there's something in this bag. Let's see here. Zapper gun. 20 ounce bottle of Crystal Pepsi. Oh, badass, a working Rob the Robot. Okay, finally. Um, we get to play Earthbound. Uh, I have been looking forward to playing this game throughout the entire first uh, part of the show. Uh, in fact, this is, has been one of the games I have planned for a while to play because I adore this game so much. I mean, if you can't tell by the fact that I'm wearing a fan gamer Ness hat, I've got my Earthbound shirt on right now, that this is a game that I love and enjoy. And we're starting off right at my favorite part of the game, uh, at least for the beginning. Uh, Buzz Buzz just died. Uh, I'm sorry, spoilers. I assume that, you know, you watching me play this game, you've played the game or you have an interest in playing it. So we're gonna just do this. The only reason I'm starting right here is one, not because it's the best part of the game, but I love the way Onet Morning comes up. So here he comes, watch this. Boom, dun, 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 dun. Ah, God, I fucking love this game. I freaking love this game. It is such a great game. Uh, Earthbound is such a beautiful RPG. So let's go over some of the mechanics of the game um, that kind of make it different from a lot of RPGs, uh, especially at the time. Uh, around this time of the, uh, of the, that's the one thing, is that normally RPGs at this point in time, especially JRPGs, have a lot of random encounters where you wouldn't see the enemies. Uh, and Earthbound kind of did a little bit differently. We'll go over this battle, we'll go over another battle sequence and kind of talk more in depth on this, because I just kind of got caught off guard right there. Um, but what I love about Earthbound is at the time, the norm was pretty much Final Fantasies. Uh, a lot of fantasy games, not a heck of a whole lot of like modern RPGs, and specifically they were. It was all science fiction -y, if anything. Uh, Earthbound did the whole kind of set in America almost. It's actually set in a very parody America. We'll kind of get we'll show more about that as we kind of go through here, through the town of Onet. Uh, the four major town, the, the towns in the world of, of Earthbound, uh, specifically uh, Eagle Land, 
is where you're born in are the four, the four main towns are uh, Onet, uh, Tucson, uh, that's T W O S O N, Threed, uh, and Foreside. Uh, it's really funny that they just named it one, two, three, and four. Uh, there's a lot of those kind of jokes in this game, and I think that's, that's sort of part of its charm. So let's go into battle sequence kind of analyze it a bit more. As you know, I kind of hit the enemy there. Um, it's not the flashiest of interfaces, but it, it does its job well. I mean, you have the ability to pull your body items, eat health regenerator things. Um, you have the ability to, if you want to run away from battle, you can try. Um, and then you have the ability to just attack straight up. Uh, the cool part about this is how, again, how it all works in and sort of ties it up. We also have the ability of, of uh, psychic attacks. Uh, all the, uh, most of the main characters, uh, which are, by the way, will be Paula, or Ness, Paula, Jeff, and Pooh in that exact order. Uh, three of the of our key characters, uh, Ness, Paula, and Pooh, uh, can use psychic abilities. Uh, either they're, they're offensive, recovery, or assistive. Uh, let's try one right now out really quick just to get, get some health back. Uh, Life of Alpha. Uh, and they're all kind of fun no names and whatnot. And there you go. That's what I wanted to show, hopefully, was the criticals in this game. Uh, it, it has such a... I think that's what I love about this game the most is the charm it has. Not so much the, you know, everything, but let's get let's get our, our butts to Onet uh, so I can show off more of, of sort of the humor here. That's kind of what I want to show more of, just the basic stuff here. Uh, we'll definitely cover more in, in other episodes and kind of cover the other towns. Um, kind of bounce around the game a bit just to give you guys an idea of that. But welcome to the, the city of Onet. Uh, we have a burger joint. We have a drugstore. We have a town hall. And, every, and a lot of things are interactable. For example, we can read this sign here. It says here, if you have any trouble, consult your kind-hearted mayor. <laughs> okay, so if we have any problems, we go there. Uh, we, we also have some other kind of funny things. For example, we can try not to get, we can enter people's houses, talk to people. <laughs> it's a little, little bit of a, of a free, but you can also knock on some doors that don't have anything. For example, uh, like the, <laughs> so all the newspaper go away. We don't read the paper. We don't want any milk either. <laughs> Again, a lot of very strange humor in the game, uh, and and it, that's to its real charm. Is A lot of it is just very much uh, that. So let's see if I can find because there's a lot of hidden in jokes, a lot of weird things. I think Onet is the one that has the Beatles um, reference in it, I think. Uh, I don't remember where it exactly is, but we'll find it right now. I think it's the next hotel. <laughs> uh, maybe it's right here. I know it's like. Very cool. Here it is. Okay, pop quiz. A Beatles song. XX today. Can you fill in the blanks? Yes. <laughs> of course, the Beatles song yesterday. All my troubles seem so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. Oh, I believe in yesterday. Great song. Um, but anyways, uh, the town of Onet, of course, you know, wouldn't be that fun if it weren't, wouldn't be interesting if it weren't for the fact that, uh, well, we got a little bit of a gang problem. See, these j jokers here, the sharks, take it over. Uh, the arcade. Uh, and then eventually they'll, you'll, you'll see some, some more, uh, enemies around here. See, there's the sharks there, you could fight them. I'm gonna avoid them because I'm not necessarily leveled up enough to do anything, and I'll probably get my ass handed to me. Um, but a lot of things that made Earth, that makes Earthbound very charming and a very fun game uh, isn't so much of its graphical look. It's the fact of the matter that it's just such a very funny game. Like, let's go really quickly and grab us the map. We don't have a map quite yet. Let's go actually get the item from the map. We have to actually take it from the library. So let's do that really quick uh, to kind of again show you a little bit of the humor more. Uh, and, and what, what kind of event you're in for. <laughs> we can only borrow maps from the library. Yeah, sure. 
Here's a map. Oh, that is the only thing on the map. You know, there's... Oh, oh, oh. The fact of the matter, it references the X button. This is one thing that I like about uh, Earthbound. There's a couple points in the game where it will definitely break the fourth wall and reference uh, what it is it's, it, it's doing and kind of make a nod to the player. For example, says pressing the X button allows you to view the map at any time. How convenient. You know the X button, located near the top. Ha ha ha. And the joke is, is that Ness, the character, it doesn't it doesn't know what an X button is. This little guy here, Ness, doesn't you know? That's not that's not a nod to him. That's a nod to you. And there's points in the game where uh, the game will acknowledge you, the player, uh, a lot, and 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 tip the hat your way. Where it'll be like you know the X button, <laughs> uh, and it, and it's things like you know like it says near the top. I think the Japanese version it says it's the one that's I like, think a red or yellow or whatever color the. Um, the X button is in, in the Japanese uh, Super Famicom. I forget. Uh, it's one of those colors. Um, but they make that reference. That They make the, the, the joke a lot. The idea behind that. Now there's one other last and final thing I want to show off because it's something that I think um, we need to get out of the way. Uh, it's something that eventually leads up to a really cool ending on uh, a very, very touching ending sequence. But at the time when it happens, it's both amusing and annoying at the same time. But god darn it, I love it. And that is this. We always have to do a Fuzzy Pickles. Always required. It'll be the fondest memories. Uh, a couple other things I should probably show off because I, I, I realize there's some fun kind of... God, this is also important. So, uh, as you noticed, I had a whole red symbol around me. So, it, essentially, when you're getting, before you get into battle, it'll kind of signify what things sort of happen. Uh, you get caught off guard. You'll have a red kind of spiral thing happens or showing evil. If you're going to fight a normal battle, sort of be a blocky kind of whatever, uh, if, however, you're going to fight a weaker battle, I'm hoping I see one eventually so I can show you guys, uh, you'll actually see a green spiral. In fact, the game, if you're too powerful already for something, um, it'll actually allow you to skip the battle. It'll just sort of automatically happen. Uh, it's really convenient to, to when you're overpowered after a certain point. You're just like, I just want to move this air really quickly, uh, that you don't have to worry too much about um, having to deal with the same kind of enemies over and over again to sort of get to skip over some of the weaker things. Uh, and it was really, really, really helpful um, in terms of, of just getting through areas quickly. Uh, some battles you can never skip and some are very difficult too. And it, it, it's very, it, it's a very rare thing. The enemies, for example, will run away from you if they're if you're stronger than them, out of, out of fear almost. So there's a lot of really kind of nice tweaks um, in the game that were different from a lot of the RPGs back then. Uh, a lot of them were, um, like I said, just sort of fantasy. Uh, we'll definitely talk more about this. We're going to be doing a multiple part episode on this one. Um, that. But there's one thing I wanted to show you guys because it, it kind of feels weird. And it's because we got to talk to the liar. <laughs> This is Liar Exaggerate, by the way. But this is something I wanted to show you guys, because this is something strange, I think. Kind of parallel to what's happening to me. Um, it's weird, to be honest. But there's, there's Liar Exaggerate. We're going to go see something cool. It's one of the interesting concepts of this game, which, if we have enough time, we'll... If we have enough time, we'll cover what this is, probably. Ah, uh, it's this. This is the Mani Mani statue. Um, it's a very, very ever-present kind of evil in the game. Uh, it becomes more important what it is later, but... I don't know, it just... Thinking of all the things it has, it just kind of, kind of makes me think of 
I don't want to say his name because I think he may be listening. I, I think I'm losing my mind, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but I want to make sure I showed that. Uh, we're going to be pretty much done with our first part here uh, in Onet. We'll probably show the other towns and the other parts, maybe some other enemies and some stuff, probably get some of the more of the team involved. Uh, but don't worry, we're going to cover more on this um, and, and on Earthbound and everything else, so we'll definitely have everything Earthbound-y. Uh, because this is, like I said, one of my favorite games, and we're not gonna just, we can't, it can't just be given one episode. It, it must be given enough, more, way more than that. So we're gonna cut this part one short, a bit done now. Uh, so, you know, wait on and see what I say next. Uh, most likely it will be me talking about how you can see the site or something like that, the usual stuff. Uh, we tend to record this ahead of time. So uh, take it away, me. He just jumps on him? Yeah, can you believe it? Completely smashed him. Let's splat! Damn. Pixels are just going all over the place. You know, he was like two days away from retirement. They always are. Yeah, I had a family too. Like a dog, some kids. Although I think he was cheating on his wife. Completely hot though. Just, uh, you know, actually, he sounded like a dick. I'm glad it happened to him. Oh, hey everybody. Welcome back. Well, I'm no closer to getting out of here. I did meet this, um... Er... We'll skip the video game biology lesson for now. Just call me... Call me... You know... I don't think I was ever given a proper name. Heck, I still think I'm just enemy 01 in the code. So, just call me... Missing No. Nah, too long. How about Null? Yeah, Null. That sounds important. I can get behind that. Null it is. So anyways, I'm nowhere near getting out of here, so I'm just going to hold off on the whole final summation on Earthbound. Well, even though I won't be able to comment right away, you can still join in the discussion at our website, cosplay.tv slash RetroFunTime. There you'll find... Who are you talking to? Uh, the audience. The audience? Well, see that camera guy over there? Yeah, I see him. Well, he's filming it for the audience of Retro Fun Time. What's Retro Fun Time? Well, Retro Fun Time is kind of like, ah, oh, never mind. There you'll find links to the previous episodes, show notes, social account, and everything else about this show and other shows in the network. Like what? Well, there's Jump Point, a podcast about gaming. Uh, that's a pretty good start. So is this going to be on the Sega channel or something like that? <sighs> never mind. Anyways, that's our show for today. So tune in next time. Ah, forget it. How the heck do I get out of here? You sure there's nothing in that sack of tricks? I've looked in here like a hundred times. All I'm seeing is an old Game Boy Micro and R-Wing plushie and... Hang on. If this is what I think it is, this could be my way out of here. Funny I didn't see it before. Could have sworn I looked through everything in this bag. Oh well, here goes. <gasps> yes, score one for potion doors. Well folks, looks like I might get out of here yet. Wait, well, come or what, Null? Huh? What? It's not like you're doing anything around here. Come on. Besides this camera guy, I'm sort of alone here. It's not like I talk with him. Plus, he kind of scares me. I heard that. So, what do you say? Ready for an adventure? Uh, it's not like I'm doing anything around here anyways. Whoop. Kind of roomy in here. Well, folks, looks like I'm delving deeper into this pixel rabbit hole. That's all for now. But remember, it ain't art unless you prove it to be. Take care. So tell me more about this retro podcasting thing. Well, Retro Fun Time is kind of this video podcast that we do about classic video games. Mm, so it's like public television? Well, no, it's... Uh, hold on. You coming or what, camera guy? All right, I'm coming. So podcasting is this new form of media consumption where people download them on their mobile devices. They kind of... Thank <laughs> you.